So uh, for the first part, I will talk about the landscape of uh, EMS, the uh, electronic uh, manufacturing services. And the second one will be different explained uh, tiers of uh, factories and the realistic uh, manufacturing options and alternatives and how to track progress for startups. <coughs> okay, the first one is the, uh, the landscape of EMS. So basically, uh, basically in, in the manufacturing industry, we have the three models. We're more than that, but uh, generally the major one of the three. Uh, OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturing, uh, ODM, Original Design Manufacturing, and uh, nowadays we have this uh, new uh, joint development manufacturing models. The first one, OEM, basically you own the design, you have all the design spec ready, and all they, uh, all they do is that uh, using your design and do a manufacturing. So they are in charge only about a simple build, mass production, and uh, nothing else. So that's what we call OEM model. So for, to talk with OEM, you have to make sure your design is ready. Your occupancy is ready, your schematic is confirmed, your uh, layout is ready, so such a, such a thing like that. For, OD, uh, for ODM, the, uh, it's sort of like extension of from the OEM. Because like, for like, uh, uh, say for example, Sony. I work with, uh, Sony work with uh, Foxconn for two projects, and then, uh, Fox on those. Oh, okay, okay. I know. I understand what Sony wants. I know what the Sony design look like. And I can do a design for them. So OEM is sort of like extension of uh, uh, ODM is like sort of an extension of OEM. They base on your requirement and do a design for you. All right. And then you move on to the JDN. JDN uh, for ODM, you all you need to do is design, uh, specify your spec, and we based on your spec, we, they do a design. Okay. And the JDN is that we come up with a spec, then we do a design. And most of the cases that we come up with a spec, you guys will do a software, like most of the cases, and they will do the hardware design because they are really, really good at manufacturing. So that's called a JDN model. All right. And then the next one, the DFM. A lot of guys understand like, uh, um, you guys have a fully working prototype. <coughs> But it's always like, uh, like for example, Kickstarter and Nico, there are so many projects, and they have a full working prototype, awesome video clips, but they fail to deliver to the market because working prototype to DFN is another gap. DFN is in, uh, stands for Design for Manufacture Ability. So, because like a fully working prototype to mass production, uh, it's two different ways of thinking. First important process is an important process for IoT startup who can rarely manage this internally. So that's why we see a lot, the huge gap here. So that's why we need the OEM, ODM, or the manufacturer expert to do a DFM for us. And then the, DF, uh, the third uh, bullet point DFM is often used to describe the design process to develop a product prototype. That uh, means like we, we use a DFM to, uh, to uh, accelerate the process. So when you, what after you do a DFN, then the, the next question will be, after I've done a DFN, then how many, are the, what's the run rate after DFN? So let's say, for, for working, for, uh, for working uh, fully working prototype, you probably can produce one per day, but after DFN, you probably can produce 100 per day. So that's how they accelerate the production run rate. And targets? Um, the reason for DFN is the ease of the production, cost reduction, and shorten the new product uh, development cycle. And I go, uh, probably new product development cycle is uh, new to you guys, so I'm going to talk about that later in, uh, uh, in the later state, uh, later slides. And the uh, typical DFN uh, steps is that try to reduce the parts of use to, uh, number of parts used to reduce the complexity of assembly. And uh, uh, shape the casing design to make it suitable for the plastic injection process and uh, use the standard part. Because uh, if you use the customer parts, it's, it's, it will be really hard to do a sourcing. If it's hard to do a sourcing, because even if you're born with missing one part, then <coughs> the production will stop. You cannot produce your part. So that's why we recom they recommend, when they do a DFN, they, re they recommend the standard parts, the, uh, the existing parts they already sourced. So how does the casing help the, you know, if you have a mold or something, how does it help the manufacturer? 
totally. So the case work, the case in help with that, they will depend on the PCB size. It depends on the PCB size when they do a molding. And then some of them, the, when they, some of the creator, they just use a, 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 the evaluation board. So when they have the case, it's different than the final product. So when they look at the evaluation board, uh, they will develop a new PCB and uh, they're using the, uh, they will look at uh, the CAD file to see how to optimize the casing to minimize the waste of the plastic to do, a, uh, um, to, yeah, to do the cost reduction in that way. And uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, um, tiers factories. There's a tier one, huge company, 10 billion of dollars in university uh, revenue. And uh, I, here are the, uh, some uh, well-known well -known, uh, ODN, Wishtron, Pegatron, Inventech, Quantac, Compound, and Foxconn. We consider them as a tier one. And uh, they work with uh, HP, uh, HP, IBM, those are big guys. And uh, they are very, has very high MOQ, which is a minimum order quantity. And tier two, uh, they're still pretty big. Because like, for example, in Taiwan, we, for most part of Taiwan to South part, it only take seven hours of driving, but we have more than 700 uh, manufacturers, and that's how we categorize it, tier one, tier two, and tier three. So tier two factories will be publicly listed company, and such as like WNC, Fosling, Kista, Gentech, Delta, Sunrise, has over, the, over uh, 10,000 employees, And the tier three, that's uh, a tier three factory will be privately owned, double digit USD uh, million dollars revenue. And uh, he has, and they are really flexible about the minimum order quantity, and they are willing to work with a startup and the SME. What is the typical MOQ? Uh, for, for, uh, for the uh, tier three? Yes, it depends. So I have a customer for, like for, for his creating this vending machine, and uh, I have uh, one of them working with this stock, uh, working with this project, they can accept 100 for the vending machine. Yeah, some of them they can accept 3K, so it depends. Yeah. But uh, if you're talking about like a tier one, that a minimum monthly, uh, probably like you're talking about 10K or 50K per month, one grade, then they will consider your business. What is the, uh, what do you mean by hardware track project next to Ryder and KB? Oh, okay. Uh, well, basically, uh, Ryder and KBED and uh, also the IDT, uh, they, uh, well, well, I put a hardware track name over there, is that we already have a successful case by uh, working with the hardware track project because we focus on startup and SMB. So they're already working with a uh, startup that we introduced, them, introduced to them. So that's the reason why I put it in. And uh, so next one, oh, I have categorized all the manufacturers from tier one, tier two, tier three. So realistic manufacturing option, tier one and two company are usually not realistic option for startup because uh, that's a, they are looking for the high quality, of, uh, they are looking for high MOQ. They probably want to work with Apple, IBM, Microsoft, or Fitbit, such a company like that, or GoPro. And tier three provides a much, so that's why we recommend, we have a lot of tier three uh, um, manufacturing on our platform. They provide a much better option, and they are really flexible at OQ, and they're sometimes willing to take a small order if there's a feasible chance to grow up uh, for a large follow up order. And uh, sometimes they, they invest. Uh, to the startup as well, yeah. Because for our platform, we understand every business needs to have the two wins: one way for the creator, you find the right resource, and win for the expert, they have an opportunity to grow the business, and also have to work with a new application and new product. So the other one will be alternative innovation lab. So for large like tier ones. They are looking for 50k uh, units from per uh, uh, run rate per month. But uh, uh, do they understand the trend of startup? Of course they do. So that's why they have this small budget to have this innovation lab, like for Flagtronics, they have a Flex innovation compound, quantize a BU1, BU11, looking for the uh, looking for the startup uh, uh, projects, J Blue Sky, Foxconn, Inocom, and Wish Valley Creation. 
those like you can they are not like a accelerator but uh, they are like a small team size that are willing to work with the startup to invest the alternative strategic alliance so I said if you have a, a very potential product very um, uh, future looking product then some like uh, we have contacts like Intel, TI, Qualcomm, MediaTek if you use their solution, like Rockchip from China, if you don't use their, their uh, solution, they have a strong relationship with the OEM and ODN. They can help with you. They can invest. Uh, they can help you. They can work with you. And I got one of the uh, examples is like I have uh, one uh, creator created this uh, 360 IP camera. He's using Umbrella, a new research chipset. So Umbrella is helping them to find the OEM and helping them to do manufacturing. And of course, uh, we, uh, and I mentioned about like uh, uh, prototypes, alternative small value manufacturing, like C from Shenzhen. Uh, I think pretty much like uh, well is like in the San Francisco area, and they can just make one prototype for you, and also defendable, and uh, ship prototype. Uh, they also can help you to find uh, 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 help still, and they can help you to build a prototype from one to hundred. They can and from just E from Taipei small scale PCB production and assembly, they can accept one PCB A order. Yeah. And uh, mixed tile from Shenzhen, they can do a rapid design and production for hardware startup. And uh, Redcom, Hong Kong, rapid design for and production for the hardware startup. For those, just uh, right now on platform, we have 1,500 uh, supply chain contacts. And this uh, just a small portion of the uh, manufacturer that we have. So what is the time frame like? If they're doing only one PC to design, mm -hmm. you know, do they need like two weeks to do the first one, or you know, do you have a estimate on how long it takes for them to get that going? Okay, it depends on the, um, of course, if you're talking about PCBA, mm -hmm. it would be like a less than months, but if you're talking about the whole product with a case, then it depends on the case, how you want your case to be built, 3D, CNC, like that. So normally if you use a CNC, that's less than a month. And the alternative how track programs for creators. So uh, our platform, I will be more specific about creators because our platform we have uh, creators and uh, experts. Creators, I mean like all the hardware, uh, innova uh, uh, hardware innovation creators who has a project, who needs the help for the supply chain. That's uh, what we call our, our creators, our platform. And the experts, when we call experts, it's a general term that we use. We that expert represent the uh, accelerator. Uh, uh, Manufacturer, VCs, uh, marketing agency, and also retail uh, retail channels and uh, distributor. So, that we, well, so uh, yeah, I just want to clarify the terms that we use. And for the alternative hard track program for creators, well, we now we have uh, 20 plus programs, but this is just one slide that we have right now. For so like uh, CC port, it's a uh, uh, double is an electronics component distributor in China. Uh, if you put, apply the program, they will ask you to provide the bone, and based on the bone, they will provide you the cost and also the second source. Yeah, so it's really a good program, like a kick water. I went to their uh, factory uh, uh, this uh, this year, and uh, uh, it's amazing how they can produce a PCB uh, at the uh, uh, aerospace level. Yeah, that's really uh, high quality uh, PCB manufacturer. But uh, and also they can accept one more. Yeah. Which one is that? Kim Brother. Kim Brother? Yeah. All these like a piece, this is a PCB and the Kim Brother, they can accept one PCB order. And uh, well, let me back up a little bit. So that's the end of my first part. And uh, if you guys have a question, if not, I will move to the uh, second part of my presentation. Okay. I have one question, Mark. Yes. On the three different business models, mm -hmm. is it a pretty flat curve from one level to the next, or does it get exp exponentially more expensive? Uh, uh, I would say it's not really, in terms of cost, it's not really tied to the uh, model, because uh, OEM, they, um, they don't have much about the uh, bargain price, they don't yeah. have much 
uh, they don't have a bargain, uh, bargain power in terms of the components because they, they just basically are your, based on your product design yeah, to source the components. For ODN, okay, they have a power to design parts, right? So they have a sourcing power to, de to, de uh, to bargain with the TI, uh, NHP, say, okay, I, have, uh, I can design your part, but uh, I'm going to give me a better price. So it's not really the, uh, the, the cost is not really uh, tied to the uh, models. Yeah. So, how do you manage how do you manage the substituting a part to one of the cost of goods and not telling you when the part may not work? Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, so they decide to go to a different venue for the part, mm -hmm. and that change causes your design to stop working, which may not be their fault. <coughs> your design may be fault. But how do you how do you manage to make sure that they notify you? So? Okay, that that's the case. You're talking about ODM, right? Because like OEM, it's basically to follow your, your design. So they're not going to change your parts. But for ODM, they, they have uh, they based on your requirement. Okay, let's say um, TI has a uh, video camera chip, but Ibra has a video camera chip. It's up to them. It's up to the ODM to decide who to use. But of course, the software will be will, will developed by you, but uh, it can work either way, uh, as long as it, it's Linux based, like that. So they, so they have a bargain power to uh, bargain with a TI or XP or Umbrella and say, okay, I have a 100K business right here, so who can be, give me a better price? Yeah, like I know GoPro is uh, it's crazy. Uh, uh, it's crazy, like uh, they ask a vendor to do reduce the phone calls, 50% each year. Yeah, but uh, because ODI has a bargain power. For, OD, for OEM, I just follow your design. You can consign the parts, I don't care. So Jack, how do you deal with, <clears throat> in some of the ODMs, actually finding the equivalent parts? Because one of the things that's kind of interesting between the US and Asia, and, you know, one of the dirty little secrets, is that there's different part numbers. Mm -hmm. In other words, the way a manufacturer keeps his average selling price, his ASP high, mm -hmm. in the US and Europe, is by actually having different part numbers for the same part in Asia. Mm -hmm. So you can't really cross them because they're different part numbers. They're the same part, but he's selling it 10 times less price in Asia. And it's really hard sometimes, and they get custom part numbers. Mm -hmm. yes. And so it's really hard sometimes to find, and that's how they, you know, that's how they get into a Foxconn or into exactly. a, exactly. into a J-Bell, right? You know, it's like, oh, we can meet your price target, but it's this other, Nod, nod, wink, wink. It's this other part number, right? Yes, yes. It, and it's very difficult to track that. It, exactly, exactly. Because like uh, for ODM, the other thing I want to talk about ODM is like let's say uh, Michael has a project use the uh, A part, and the VJ has a project use the uh, A part as well. So uh, come together, then has a hundred K business. Then I can use hundred K to bargain with a customer uh, to bargain with a, like such as like TI to have a customized uh, part to meet my. Uh, price target, so like that. So that's why I said ODA has more bargain power yes. because they have the uh, power to decide uh, to uh, choose the part, and uh, they have uh, uh, more than one customer using the same part. Yes. So it's really hard to, uh, but normally when we, because I was working for TI, normally when we have uh, customer parts, that's the special price. Yeah, otherwise, you just buy the parts from the uh, DigiKey or Yeah. We will have a customer pass just for, just like we said, Foxconn, and uh, some of uh, the customer pass just for Cisco. So this is the same part as well. For, functionality wise, it's completely same, but it's just that part is for the Cisco project only. Right. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, allow me to uh, move to the uh, second part of my presentation. How to approach and work with a factory. So uh, here are some key point, uh, uh, bullet points. Nobody is selling to you. What do I need to get a quotation? Request for quote package. Who should I contact? How to approach a manufacturer? Communication. How does a factory manager a new hardware budget? When should I go to China or Taiwan to find a factory? What to prepare? What should I see or check when I'm in China? Should I spend time in China doing the production? Should I manage the sourcing of the parts? Yeah, the, uh, the topics I'm going to talk about in the uh, next slides. 
So nobody is selling to you the cool. So OEM, ODM manufacturer, engineering and manufacturing company are uh, and actually dominated by engineers. So they are not really selling product, they are selling their service. They are selling service like, uh, for example, like, uh, by just like, uh, by just like uh, I can build your product in a very low cost, fast, and quality, high quality, like that. So uh, factory quotations are cost oriented. They will calculate all costs involved and they and then provide a quotation using their cost plus their markup. And bone cost. And then uh, bone cost mean, uh, bone means stands for the bill of material. Uh, the name of the bone cost is uh, uh, the bone is a, mis a little bit misleading since it's, it's not all the parts and material used as the uh, name implies, but as well other costs. So you have raw material, double uh, E and mechanical components, of course, and the packaging process, direct labor, waste and scrapping, MRE and tooling, margin and shipping. But most likely, most likely, when we talk about when we talk to the manufacturer, when they say bone. They refer to the second part, the second bullet, electronic and mechanical components. And uh, then I would say it's part of the negotiation because they will hide all, most all these like, uh, cost and give you a quotation. And you have to dig out to say, okay, then what's your uh, the direct labor cost? What's your process of material cost? Like that. So, did you help discover all of those details? Well, basically, uh, here's what we give you a reference. What, what, they, what kind of cost they might add. But uh, since we don't involve the conversation, since uh, our platform is a premium, so basically we help you to, uh, we have we based on your product and your uh, supporting to bridge your contact to you, and you guys will handle the conversation. But if any questions you have, uh, we can uh, help you out. So basically, we don't involve the negotiation about a bone cost, but it will give you the uh, reference that what kind of cost will be included in the bond, uh, in the quotation, like that. And yeah, next part will be, uh, when you talk to, uh, like for example, if you are looking to work with OEM, then you have to have a package ready, right? You have a design ready. So when you approach OEM, uh, everything's ready, you shorten the time to have an uh, email back and forth about uh, what information is missing. So right now I'm going to talk about uh, what do I need to get a call and uh, the normal term for uh, manufacturer to get a, to provide a quotation is RFQ. Do you have RFQ package ready? Request for quotation. So RFQ package, uh, here's some uh, content overview. It's a lot, uh, description, ID, uh, the WE, uh, testing requirement, certification, and forecast, investor that. Because not, normally you don't have to include the investor that, but I found out, I put it in here is that since we, are, um, well, we, work, a lot, we work a lot with a startup, and if you want to uh, manufacture to take your case seriously, since you have a small uh, minimum order, you probably want to uh, put an investor that in here. So that we say, okay, I can go with a hundred for that because I look for large value later. So that's why I put an investor that it would be better when you approach your manufacturer, they understand your roadmap, so they are more willing to work with you. But if that also works effectively, because if they sell some big names in there, you know, they don't want to reduce the price. Big name like uh, like if you have, you know, somebody's backing you, you know, who's a well-known backer, and they see their potential and. Is it possible that when they do the code, they see that oh, we've got tons of money, you know, so they don't want to reduce the price to a real number? It, it, can that happen? Well, you keep, uh, I, well, normally it, the case is reversed because uh, uh, when I see this, when you have an uh, investor or you have the uh, fund, uh, well, you have an investment, you have a funding, they are more willing to work with you because normally the startup. They are looking for the funding as well because I have so many startups there. Yeah, they can pay the NRE, but they are not able to pay the tooling. So yeah, it would be better if you include it, you have a private investment. They give you the confidence. That, okay, I'm more more than willing to work with this startup. Yeah. And how to approach your factory? And don't send your after package without an idea. Of course, that's the first thing that you will do, sign an idea before you send in a package. And uh, um, 
of course, like before sending this, uh, uh, before sending your after package and uh, uh, signing idea, you can generally describe your product and uh, uh, give the general uh, electronic uh, WE and technical specification and some key components and project description and key investor partners funding such information like that. And, and when you approach them, then you can see the feedback before sending the after package because after after your package is really has a lot. If you have all this information, it's pretty much your design. So before, uh, so how to approach a factory? You have this general uh, information ready, then you send it to them, or you have a Kickstarter campaign page, send it to them for the evaluation. They will come back with some question, then you can move the, uh, then if you, if you think that the question is valid, if you think that they are willing, you are, if you are willing to work with them, then move on to the next, to sign an NDA and send an RFQ package. So how, how, how much is the NDA enforceable? You know, what, what is the value in doing the NDA? Um, uh, I would say NDA is, uh, I've got a lot of creators have any concern like how to protect their IP in China and Taiwan. And uh, I don't know how to, uh, it's not, there's no 100% uh, way to protect your IP when you work with a uh, manufacturer without trust. Because like, uh, I, it's really, uh, NDA doesn't really protect you uh, in anywhere. Like, uh, you could do that, no Jimbo. Jimbo, like a uh, little robot uh, yeah. that created, uh, that was uh, created in New, uh, one of the New York uh, startup. And uh, that's exactly, not exactly, but the same product that created in UK is called Aku. And this year, Asus made a, uh, another robot just like Jimbo called Zenbolt. So it's really hard to protect your IP. But uh, what I can tell you is that uh, uh, when you work with the manufacturers, uh, what's, uh, the value for you is your IP. But uh, the value for them is uh, their reputation. They try to grow, right? Like, so for example, if Foxconn works with Apple and it leaks out their ID design, who's going to who's, who's lose more? Foxconn, because they lose their reputation. So the, the, the manufacturer for the tier three, they really value their reputation. And the other thing is that if your product is a consumer product, you have the idea, you, you gotta know like your product gonna, is gonna be exist in the market for six months, that's it. Somebody will catch you, somebody will come to you. It doesn't matter what kind of product it is. No, it doesn't matter how protect your product, how you protect your product. So that's the two things. The other thing is that, most of the uh, uh, American startup they have uh, know-how in their software, so they let the hardware for the uh, they will they will let the hardware to to the uh, manufacturers. So hardware is easy to copy, all right? It's easy. I can tear it apart. I can uh, uh, tear it apart and uh, just like try to see what's inside. Just like just like the, uh, the website, how to fix it. They tear it apart. You know what to buy and the, the, the rough cost of the uh, iPhone. And the software will, be, will get copied eventually. But what cannot be copied is like time to market and the relationship with the customer, right? So that three things, uh, I'm, well, of course, I got a lot of questions about uh, how to protect the IP, of course, that's not the idea. But uh, here are some three experts, probably, when we develop a product, then we can think about that to, pro to accelerate the product and uh, not to worry about the IP concern. I think it also depends if you're having your product directly shipped from the manufacturer or not to the end customer. Because what we would do a lot with our circuit boards is we would develop just a manufacturing test firmware. Mm -hmm. So the only, the only firmware we would give the OEM or the manufacturer was the one that would actually just test the product. And then when we got it back, we would load the final firmware on and then burn the reback fuses so that we could copy it up. Yes, yes. So that's that's how we would that's handle it. Okay. So basically, it would it, you'd give them firmware that toggles all the pins or does you know runs a function that can run the knobs and will run a light whatever so they can test it. Mm -hmm. But then we load the actual firmware once we get it back here. Okay. The other thing that I have is uh, okay. yeah. So you're suggesting really patents are useless. It's not useless. It's a uh, I, I I just like. I cannot guarantee you. I cannot guarantee a way to 100% protect your IP. Signing an NDA is just the first step. 
but uh, consider of the uh, time to market, consider of their reputation, and consider of the, uh, the expert, you probably want to spend more time on your product development and try to get your product on market. Yeah, I think patents, patents as a defensive strategy are fairly useless these days. What we would do is we would actually just file a provisional and then let it expire so that no one could come in and patent, your product. And patent our product. Yeah. And then the other thing that uh, I know, noticed like uh, several cases, uh, it's not for startup, but for SME, we have a uh, 50, size of 50 uh, employees. They have uh, their uh, Three, two or three project managers to handle the project. They were outsourced to different companies like PCPA for A, uh, A company and the case for B company, assembly for C company. And uh, it's quite a hassle for the startup, especially like when you talk about size, less than 10 people. Yeah. But that's how they protect their IP, right? And who do I contact in the factory? Finding a business developer or salesperson is often surprisingly uh, difficult. Yes, uh, here's the case like uh, I have a one creator from San Francisco. It's a startup. He's making it's a coin bag, a coin sized uh, module for a cellular phone. And uh, when I approached him, he said, "I got an agent in San Francisco, and that agent got me another agent in Hong Kong, and that Hong Kong agent finally got me a manufacturer." And it took, it took in a week to find the right contact in that manufacturer to streamline the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the communication. So that took in a, a, a month to do that. But uh, uh, So that's why when you do it by yourself, you approach your manufacturers, try to find the right contact, it's, uh, it's quite uh, a lot of work. So that's why we created a uh, hardware track uh, platform. So when you come on board, we, uh, let's explain a little bit about this. For creators, we're open to a world. If you have any idea, create a project. For experts, we actually, at least, we have to have a phone call with them to verify their email, to verify their profile, to verify their solutions before I can bridge them to them. So, so what I mean is that who do I contact in the factory? Um, it's really hard, it's really, uh, it takes a lot of work before for you guys to provide the right contact, but if I'm how track platform, we can make sure you are contacting the right contact. Yeah. And communication. And the fundamental cultural difference between the Western and Asian communication, style is not a cliche, but it has a real life impact. So, uh, uh, you know, if it's uh, in the Western world, I uh, used to manage conflicts, but uh, the Asian way is to avoid the conflict. So uh, there's a couple of difference. If a Chinese engineer tells that it uh, will be difficult, then it means that is a way of saying that it's uh, impossible, just avoiding the no. So the best way to monitor and track the progress is to closely monitor uh, following using a product management tool uh, so that we can uh, look at the same, uh, same side and uh, uh, more uh, neutral level of uh, way uh, to track the status. And on hard track, we product, we have this uh, PDH, what we call PDH. It's called a production production development hub. So when you create a product, we based on your shipping day, give you all the uh, schedule, and you can track from there. And that's what we're trying to do. It's a still a better version, but that's what we are trying to do here to give you the planning tools, so the manufacturer and you and us can look at the same schedule and help you track the project status. Because communication sometimes uh, it's not just English, but sometimes you mislead into the other misunderstood uh, the spec as well and uh, the schedule. And then we will talk about product production management. So product life cycle seven stages. There are many way uh, many uh, different PLC models. Uh, this is a C flow, check flow. Uh, it's, it's widely adapted in, uh, in manufacturers. Market research, planning, design, sample evaluation, pile up, mass production, and our life. I'm going to talk about a little more in the next slide. The MPD, the objective uh, uh, of MPD planning is widely adapt check cycle, uh, production probability, on time delivery, risk management, and quality assurance. So I have uh, uh, a flow in the next slide. So, like this, here's a flow for the <coughs> 
So uh, you start from the beginning, plan the product, and then move to a concept design, which means you have to come, um, which means that you have to complete your spec, uh, your spec. Now, now, for concept design, you have to complete like uh, what kind of chipset you are using, uh, what kind of uh, Bluetooth chipset you are using, and then you can move to EVT. EVT means engineering verification test. So in this stage, engineers will uh, double E. Uh, electronic engineers were in charge of this stage. They make sure all the features are working. Okay, and then move to the gating. Gating means like they will uh, they will invite you to the uh, uh, to the meeting, and the double E's will perform the uh, will present the data and the, the report to see if you want to move to the next level. And then DVT means so this. If it fails, what happens? If it's failed, it goes back. So they fix it or? Comes back to us to help or fix it? Uh, well, it depends on the model. If it's OEM, then you fix it. If it's ODM, they fix it. Yes. And the uh, DVT is for design verification test. It's mechanical, ID, uh, industrial design engineer are in charge of this stage. Okay, to make sure the parts are okay, and uh, you can take a look at the right hand side of the, this is in parallel of the, the process. So in this state, from DVT to DVT is still in development state. And uh, you, after the EVT, you may send the parts. Once in the case, you, have, you can send your part to do a regulation and certification in parallel. So design, is, design verification test this stage is the uh, ME and the ID engineers are in charge of this stage. And also as a gating uh, uh, meeting. And uh, PVT will be production verification test. In this stage, production engineer AI is in charge of this stage. They will try to set up the production line, make sure each, working, uh, each stage is working, and have a pile run, such as like 100 pieces, 1K pieces, to make sure everything goes as a flow, and uh, everything works as uh, uh, smoothly. And then they have a getting as a close meeting, and then we move to the next production. So that's a typical of a, a new product development process. And when should I go to China, Taiwan, or to find a factory, and what to prepare? So basically, when you go to China or Taiwan, you of course you will already make some contacts, and uh, so that you at least you know who who to visit. So you'll get some proposal because like I'm not for our platform. We have uh, we don't normally help the creator. We introduce uh, at least a uh, ten. If you have, of course, we value your uh, your project status. We often often uh, um, uh, bridge you uh, around five to ten. If you come to visit, probably you want to visit two a day or one a day. If you send a project, you can only visit one factory a day. But if you're in Taiwan, probably you can visit two factories a day. Like that. So, uh, of course, you want to have uh, uh, make some initial contacts, get some initial proposal before you, you come to Taiwan, China. And what to prepare? So, the expected outcome for the meetings, prepare the questionnaires, uh, prepare the design documents, so that you can, uh, when you have a meeting, it's not just a salesperson or PM join the meeting. Also, you want to have a QC, you also have, you want to have a double E, a QC means a quality control guys. Uh, double E guys and ME guys to join the meeting so that you can talk about the design. Yeah. And what should I see or check when I'm in China, uh, uh, in Taiwan? And uh, of course, like um, we come to China, I will come to Taiwan or China when we first uh, when we have a meeting with uh, manufacturers. Uh, it will break it down into three parts. First part, they make an introduction to you. They say, what's our, uh, what's our business size, what we're good at, uh, what's our uh, expertise, and uh, uh, they will, introduce, they will uh, introduce a little bit about the, the, their quality control, and then after that, it will, it will be your turn to explain your product, to explain your project status, and the third uh, topic will be the open discussion. And uh, if possible, uh, especially in China, you want to uh, visit their factories. Uh, it's really important that you know, to to uh, to have a factory tour to take a look uh, at uh, uh, instruction documents are there, and if they have a DI, direct responsible individual to monitor the process. <laughs> and, uh, of 
course, ask their production run rate. Because if your run rate per month is 1K, then if you hit into a manufacturer that they're having like a, a 500K per month run rate, it's most likely your product will be in less priority task for them. So it's, I think it's really important to ask the, the production run rate. Yeah. Uh, should I spend time in China, uh, Taiwan during the production? Well, basically, one, if you have a clear complication, uh, I would suggest each gating item, just like uh, here for the uh, gating, you want to come to visit there uh, uh, to, to have a show your presence, to join a meeting, to make sure you want to go to, go to the next level. So you don't have to stay in, a whole, uh, uh, in there for the whole process because each process takes at least like six months, I would say. So for the gating, you probably take like, you will visit them like two, uh, uh, once every two months to make sure. Yeah. So you can check the uh, WA electronics uh, performance, shape quality, material function, and packaging. And uh, just like what I explained to you like uh, uh, in the early uh, beginning is that should I manage the sourcing of the parts? Uh, well, basically, um, I was working in TI when I would say my suggestion is uh, to let the sourcing of the parts that to the uh, to the manufacturer. They have a they have a sourcing team to do that. They have a bargain power to do that. They have a bargain power to to reduce the cost for you. So uh, unless it's a uh, um, highly specialized parts that uh, uh, you are not able to get from China, uh, you have to uh, uh, consign from Europe to China uh, or U.S. to China. Or otherwise, it would be better to to just let the manufacturer to do the sourcing. Can you go to the previous slide? I'll start with the last one. This one. The semester specification. Oh, okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, uh, here are some uh, uh, online distributors that we have um, that can, based on, uh, they have a solution, they have a program with us that are willing to even sell the one part to you. And uh, like, so for example, like IC Hunt, uh, Mouser. Uh, it's not public. Uh, I think it's not public. Uh, announced. Uh, Mouse is uh, it's going to work with IC Hunt, uh, the China online distributor, and uh, uh, IC Hunt has like, created this uh, profile on the platform and also the solution. So basically, you, you can provide the uh, uh, bone to them, and then we we'll come back with the bone cost and also the second source parts. Yeah, because like when I work in TI. Um, I got one creator actually from Porto. They have uh, they bought parts for Mouser, uh, no, for DigiKey. It's a twenty dollars SOC. And uh, uh, when we talk to the, when we talk to IC Hunt, they can redeem, they can uh, sell the parts even for one piece. Oh no, uh, for the fifty pieces, MOQ is fifty pieces. They can sell for fourteen dollars. And the other thing they found out is like they uh, uh, when they use when they choose their parts, they are using industrial grade. But actually, for his product, he can use a commercial grade. That's another difference. So that's why we have uh, this uh, expert to help you out to reduce the cost. Because when you reduce, when you uh, uh, select the parts, you don't know whether or not it's uh, which grade is, and uh, is there any pin-to-pin -pin parts that is uh, cost-effective, uh, cost like that. And that's why I mentioned the difference <clears throat> in the parts, because when you're starting your design, is the time you want to look at the parts that are sourced here, not at the end. So what a lot of people do is they'll use American parts, you know, that'll be very much more expensive, and then they'll have to actually relay out their circuit board because there might be slight pin differences or whatever in the commodity parts that are available in Asia. So yes. That's why it's important to do that actually early in the design phase, not when you're trying to transition to manufacturing. And the last, the, uh, that's the end of my the second part, give you my that. Uh, it's not a vending machine work job, just get started when you sign up with the factory. Lots of work after, uh, when you, after you select a uh, manufacturer. 
and uh, DFM before factory hunt. OD is not really designing for the most part. Most of the time, the design is not ready for the factories. That's why DFM is really important and uh, keep the factory as a partner, not just the laborers, because they are really partnering with you to work with you to grow with you. Because every business has to have two wins. We want to create a win-win situation. And uh, here's a sign of the fast food machine. You can only pick two. Uh, you and I will have three <laughs> when you work in the factory. So, uh, do you, so that's uh, pretty much the end of my second part of my presentation. So, any question I can answer about the uh, manufacturing? Otherwise, I will go to briefly introduce how we track, <laughs> even though I have a, a, a introduced a little bit you know, during my speech. But uh, it's, yeah, it's just what I said, it's an online platform to help you to find and manage your uh, supply chain. And uh, right now we have uh, 1,500 supply chain experts and uh, we all verify them, their profile, their contact, their emails. And uh, uh, for the hardware ecosystem, you as a creator, you have a, a brilliant idea, create a project, and that, uh, I think it doesn't matter which stage you are, we always have, we have we can help. And the uh, expert, a person who can offer the service, who want to uh, 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 work with a startup or SME, they can have a unique solution in our platform, and you can take a look at our uh, platform. That's what we name the expert. And uh, how to utilize the Howard Track platform. We basically, me, as a front-end peer, I approach you guys, explain to you how, uh, uh, how what, what we do and how uh, what we can offer to you. We build up a project and we have a PDH, you can follow the plan so you know the schedule and we match you with the expert or we match you with the solution that you can apply to move you to the next level of the uh, product, uh, manufacturing process. And here's just some numbers. Uh, we have uh, more than 1,500, uh, we have more than 2,000 projects on board and uh, we have bridged more than 800 plus projects with the experts. And uh, the last and not least, uh, uh, we uh, have this Asia Innovation Tour in 2016, uh, in November 2nd to 8th. Last, last Asia Innovation Tour was held in, uh, in April. We brought uh, 30 startups to Shenzhen and Beijing. For Beijing, is to meet with the investor. For Shenzhen, we uh, had uh, choose uh, 10 manufacturers to actually uh, bring you guys to the production line like to visit BYD, I visit uh, uh, Kim Brother, so you understand more about the manufacturing. And this year, uh, no, the second half this year, we are going to have this event bring you guys to Shenzhen, Kyoto, and Osaka. This time we have more uh, experts, we have more partners in Japan, so, but Japan is more, uh, uh, I would say, like a uh, higher uh, quality of the craftsman or uh, precision parts, uh, precision manufacturing, uh, uh, company over there, so uh, that's why we are trying to uh, bring some of the startup who creates uh, uh, high quality of products to there to take a look at the, the manufacturing over there in Japan. And uh, uh, we just have we had a landing page just yesterday, so if you have a product, if you're interested about this tool, please apply. And uh, that's it for my presentation. And uh, if you guys have any questions, please uh, feel free to raise your hand and I'm more than happy to answer 